Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm taking a look at Super 8 XL cameras. Finding a reliable vintage Super 8 camera can be a little difficult, especially because there are tons from the 1960s into the 1980s that have different features and functions and there are different models and different brands and just all these different kinds from when Super 8 was kind of the go-to amateur format. I've previously taken a look at the kind of components that you should check out when you find a Super 8 vintage camera in a thrift store or if you're looking at ones online, but there are still so many different kinds out there that I want to delve a little bit deeper into the different types of Super 8 cameras that exist. One pretty common type of Super 8 cameras that exist out there are XL Super 8 cameras. So XL cameras can be found from such a wide variety of manufacturers over the years, from Kodak and Canon and Minolta and Yashica to just name a few. But XL cameras are a little bit different from just normal Super 8 cameras that you would come across. When you see a Super 8 camera that has XL on it, it means that it has a wider shutter angle opening when exposing the film than a standard Super 8 camera does. The XL actually stands for existing light. And these cameras are designed to work better in lower light situations than non-XL Super 8 cameras. So motion picture cameras have a spinning disc inside of them that acts as the shutter for exposing the film. A portion of this disc is cut out. So as you film and the disc spins, then the film will be exposed every time this empty portion moves past it. So on non-XL Super 8 cameras, you have shutter angles of 140 or 160 or 180. And those will let in less light than a XL camera that has a wider angle shutter opening on the disc. XL cameras typically have shutter angle openings of about 220 degrees, which means that they allow more light in every time that disc spins around and the empty portion of the disc is exposing onto the film. Now there are a ton of really, really popular XL Super 8 cameras that you can find out there, and they're usually the much more sought after ones and can go for much higher prices than just a cheaper one that you would come across in say a thrift store. Many Canon models have XL shutters and some really popular ones are the 514XL, the 310XL, the 814XL, and the 1014XL. The 814 and the 1014XL are loaded with features and are some of the more expensive and sought after Super 8 cameras that you can find. Much cheaper XL Super 8 cameras like the Kodak XL 330 exist as well. But many of these specific older Kodak cameras were of a much cheaper build and aren't necessarily reliable after all these years. See, Kodak made a lot of these cheaper Super 8 cameras at the time because Super 8 film was their format. So they tended to gain a little bit more by having a lot of their own cameras that could shoot their own format. This Minolta XL401 that I have is a nice little XL camera that doesn't have a ton of features, but has that wider shutter angle and manual exposure functions, which means I could use this for some better results in low light when compared to something like this Minolta Autopack 8 S3, which just has a shutter angle of closer to 180. The XL shutter though can have its drawbacks in the way that your final image looks. See a wider shutter angle opening on a motion picture camera acts kind of the same way as a slower shutter speed on a still photography camera. Because the film is being exposed for longer periods of time than a standard shutter angle opening or a faster shutter speed, it means that you're more likely to encounter enhanced blur, especially motion blur when you're shooting on these XL cameras. Now you can of course experiment with some higher frame rates in order to capture more frames, especially during fast moving sequences, but not all XL cameras have higher frame rate options. A lot of Super 8 cameras in general don't always have a ton of frame rate options on them. A lot of them are limited to 18 and 24 and sometimes 36, but some of them don't even shoot higher than 18 frames per second, even on XL models like this Minolta one. XL cameras aren't a necessity for shooting great looking Super 8 film though. Non-XL models like the Canon Auto Zoom 814 and 1014 are almost as equally sought after as their XL equivalents. I've looked at my Yashica LD6 here before and it's a great camera with a shutter opening of only 170 degrees, but I'm still really happy with the footage that I've shot with it. But XL Super 8 cameras do exist as just another option for you guys out 
out there when you're getting into shooting Super 8 and trying to find a camera and just understanding its limitations and the functions and everything that kind of goes on inside of this camera. And it really just depends on what you're using your camera for and what kind of features you want in your camera and what kind of features you can do without and just ultimately how you want that Super 8 film to look when you shoot it. Regardless of what camera you end up picking up to shoot with, whether it's a really high-end one with a ton of features or just a cheaper one that is still giving you great looking results, Super 8 is just such a fun, fun format to be able to pick up a camera and throw in a cartridge and just start shooting with. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out and I hope that you learned a little bit more about the strange world of Super 8 cameras and just what's out there for you guys to be able to shoot and use when you're getting into this format. And subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to make all sorts of new analog content every week on the channel. All about different formats and cameras and gear and just more information for you guys to know and learn about in order to shoot a lot of this stuff for yourself. And if any of you guys are interested at all in supporting the channel, then there is a link to the Patreon for Analog Resurgence down in the description. And any sort of support or funds from that is just gonna allow me to increase the sort of stuff that I can focus on in the future and even explore more in depth some of the topics that I've already talked about in the past. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.